so glad to be here. Um, my first time in Colorado, so I might have to have pauses every 10 minutes just to breathe uh, because I didn't know it was going to be this much of a struggle. Uh, but if I do, you know, bend over, it's okay. Just give me a second to catch my breath. Uh, so my name is Brett Harbinson. I work for Movement Mortgage. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I like to tell people that I'm a millennial, just trying to figure out what to do with millennials in the workplace. Uh, I absolutely love my job. I love what I do. Um, I have a Parks and Recreation degree from UNC Wilmington uh, Coastal School in North Carolina. So not at all really what you would expect for someone to be a talent development director. But you know, my career really started a long time ago with what I really wanted to do. I grew up in Orlando, Florida. I'm a big Disney fan, and it's, it's almost to an embarrassing point. Um, so I, I actually bought last minute tickets to a Blumenthal performance of The Little Mermaid this past week just for fun because I really wanted to see the Broadway production. But as I studied Disney growing up, as I just went to the parks and I started to figure out what do I want to do with my life, I loved the idea of customer service, just people. And our company, Movement Mortgage, our mission statement says we exist to love and value people by leading a movement of change in the industry, corporate cultures, and communities. We are about to open a $12 million charter school in Charlotte, North Carolina uh, to really serve an underserved community. So my job is more about just mortgages. My job is people. Uh, and a part of that is how do you help people become the best they can possibly be? And as I entered movement, is we grew from 1,900 people to we're now at about 4,500 people in two years, we needed to figure out what are we going to do with these people? My first year was hiring. How do we hire to just get to a number where we can actually give the real estate agents what we're promising the real estate agents? And that really led to hiring a lot of people in their 20s and 30s, and even some who are experienced professionals in other industries, bringing them into our industry. But we knew there was a lot of development that they needed if we were going to continue this promise that we had given to people. And when you exist to love and value people, those are two emotions that people feel very different. So we need to figure out how can we help develop them so we can retain them long term. Now, when I started thinking through this presentation and what Bridge was asking, you know, hey, you guys did a really good implementation. I was like, awesome. What do we do? And so I had to stop and think back and like, what did we do? And I'm just going to tell you a story. And it's going to be the story of how we came to be partners with Bridge, because that's what we are. We're not here, and I'm not here to tell you that I'm the expert at Bridge or I'm the expert at talent development. Absolutely not. No one is. Right? People are constantly changing. But what I can tell you is we had a, a very poor platform that we were using two years ago. And we were now to a platform that's being adopted on a very high basis, and people are falling in love with it. So in between there, a lot happened. I know one of the big rules of presenters, like don't carry paper, but our story's just too good, and I don't want to forget anything. So that's why I've got this. Uh, you'll see this logo up here. And this logo is a really important part of kind of what our story is. Our story involves movement mortgage, and our story involves bridge. And in order for us to be successful, it was how can we bridge these two things together? Great word. You know, good job, Bridge. How can we bring these two things together, these two companies? It's not us just using Bridge, and it's not Bridge just using Movement Mortgage to get money. It's how can we work together? And our marketing department did a great job of coming up with this symbol right here that we use all the time. You will see this in courses. You see this when you log in. You see this in emails that we send out because we are linked together. Like we're committed. Uh, but this is one of the big parts of kind of us bringing it together. All right, background info. So I talked a little bit about our company. So 4,500 people, it's split between kind of two sides. We've got your operations side, which is about 21, 2,200 people, and then we have the sales side. The op side is in four different operation centers. We've got one in, it's in Indian land, South Carolina, but that's right across the border from Charlotte, North Carolina. The tax incentive was ridiculous, so we built across the line. We've got about 750 people there. 
We've got 750 people in an op center in Norfolk, a smaller site in Phoenix, Arizona, and then our smallest site is in Richmond, Virginia. So four operations side, four operation um, centers that support the sales side. Sales were in 47 states. So we're all across the United States and we continue to grow markets and pick up more loan officers. So as we look at how we need to utilize Bridge as a company, the first thing was, who are our people? And we have to figure out how can we hear what the op side needs and also how can we be what the sales side needs? Again, the LMS that we were using was not able to provide to both sides and even give us the reporting that we need. And I'm not sure how familiar you are with the mortgage industry, but there's a lot of policies and procedures and laws that we have to print reports on every year. So if we could just make that process easier, this was gonna be a big win. Uh, step one to really having a successful implementation, have a really, really crappy LMS. Right? <laughs> Anything you do will be better than what you already have. So we had that and it was just tanking. So when we presented this idea of, hey, we, we really wanna get into kind of a new LMS, our COO was like, yes, please. Like, what, what money do you need to spend? Um, so our background, that's who we are as an organization. Now, the good stuff. There you go. The beginning. So our beginning was, who is the team of people that we need to get together to really be a part of this planning committee? Now, we didn't want this team to be too big. So we didn't broadcast, hey, we're getting a new learning management system. Who wants to be a part of it? Instead, it was really head up by our chief talent officer. His name's Chris Allen. And he really decided who this strategic team was going to be. So it was a list of, we've got five people on that team. Our CTO, we've got our director of training, our instructional designer, Noah, who is my personal support here. We've got compliance department, which was really big. And then we had myself, a part of talent development. So those were the five people really leading this charge. Now, as we got into an assessment of what we needed, those were the kind of the biggest departments that needed this. Number one was compliance. Legal, we needed compliance training pushed out on a monthly basis. And the system we had was broken and we didn't want to get fined. We're a privately run company. Our CEO did not want money taken out of his pocket. We needed to fix compliance. Step two was training. Second biggest department that would use this LMS. How can we train our people? If we're growing so fast, such a rapid pace, how can we push trainings out in a smarter way? And then finally, development. Number one reason people leave jobs is because they don't feel like they are growing. They don't feel like they're being developed, especially in the millennial, the millennial generation. Right? People want to grow. And they can't just feel stuck in a job. They want to know, like, what's next? How can I get better? So development was a big part of that conversation. Some other honorable mentions, our COO, our IT director, and then our VP of HR. It's always helpful to have the VP of HR uh, just in there in the conversation. All right, so after we had the key team, we had to figure out what, what is an LMS? I, two years ago, two years ago yesterday, was when I was offered my job at Movement Mortgage. I was working with the refugee community of Charlotte. So something completely different. Before that, I was working at Disney World. Right? So not really in this mortgage space, not really in the LMS world. I remember back to college when we used Blackboard. So I had an idea of, uh, an idea of what kind of a learning management system was. But now we had more qualified people on this strategic committee. Uh, but we really needed to figure out what's an LMS. So we paid a consultant firm to really come in and teach us about what learning management systems were. We had separately, before we came together as a group, started looking into learning management systems. And funny, funny thing was we, the training director, brought Bridge in uh, kind of, I think it was a year and a half ago. I uh, remember we had Katie, she's no longer with Bridge, but she came in and did a phenomenal job showing the platform and we were like, cool, this is, this is good. So we couldn't make any decisions there, but you know, we then hired consultants to teach us even more, and we hired them to really show us what are the top eight, according to our assessment that we did, detailed assessment, what are the top eight LMS companies that could really partner with us and partner with us well? 
they gave us this long list, and I noticed that bridge wasn't on there. We'll get back to that in a second. But we really learned about these Cadillac programs and what these Cadillacs offered you. And I remember sitting during their, their when they taught about their LMS, just being completely confused, thinking this is going to be a nightmare for admins. This is going to be a nightmare for course creation. We're going to have to spend a lot of money on courses externally. I just, I don't like it. And we kept going through this process. We ended up with uh, two companies that we narrowed it down to. And then we just kind of sat around a table and we said, hey, remember Bridge? Like, I know we just went through this long assessment. We paid these consultants all this money. But remember Bridge? Remember how simple everything was? Remember the platform? And I'm pretty sure it meets our assessment. So then we brought Bridge into the conversation. And long story short, I uh, don't have my lanyard on right now, but you can tell which company we went with. Right? But we had to learn about what the LMS world was doing. What's out there? Who's the best? You know, do we need to pay all this money, or can we go with a cheaper option? Because we were the ones that had to report to the COO. We also knew that the COO wasn't going to take the time to learn this. And a lot of times, a lot of questions are asked of, well, if I could, if I could just get to your COO, I would love to try to sell him this. I'm thinking, my COO won't pay you any attention. Like He's not the guy you need to go to. So this committee really helped decide and then learn and was able to articulate and explain why we went with Bridge. That comes in handy today when we have to continue to explain the LMS that we have and why we're using it. I don't have to make things up. Like I know it, and I can say it confidently. So the beginning was really the assessment, what do we need as a company, who's out there, and then let's pick one. And then once we picked one, we really had to go and learn the product. Now, there's sandbox options that you have when you try to decide on LMSs. And I think sandbox is such a great word because I have a lot of fond memories at the beach playing in the sand or at school playing in the sandbox. But they want you to play in the system. They want you, they want you to dive in. They want you to test it. Find if there's flaws. If you don't spend time in the sandbox and doing the pre-work, you're just going to get surprises later. Now, we still got surprises because you can't know everything. But the more you know about it, the more time you spend in it, the better off you're going to be. Again, you're the one that has to explain to that leadership team, you know, why is this this way? Why do we go with this? Why are we hitting this, this wall? All right, so we learned the product. You need internal subject matter experts. That's Noah. That's our instructional designer. He knows more about Bridge than anyone in the company. Right, we have our own internal expert. Let's see. Another big thing and part of it is we had such a small group picket the joke was it was either going to be, hey, we just signed this three-year contract with Bridge. Brett's name was on that. Or, hey, we, we're stuck with them for three years. Remember that guy, Brett? Right, so me personally, I had to take a lot of pride in this decision. I had to figure out what my name was going to be associated with, not just during the process, but even today. Like, I'm a part of this LMS. And that was still like decisions that were made in the beginning to get us where we are today. All right, now once we learned the product, we had the pre-launch. So we had the launch date decided. We kind of figured out what we were going to do. But pre-launch, we had to really walk through what do we want kind of as we go through this season before we launch Bridge. The first thing we did is we signed up for that best uh, implementation package. We had three choices. We decided on the best one. And again, best money we spent because of how much time we got with Bridge. You know, it was, I think it was like a $10,000 difference. We have 4,200, 4,500 employees. Like, it was worth the money because of the customer service and constant communication that we received from Bridge. So never skip out on that implementation cost. Next thing we did is we had weekly calls with Bridge. So we were just always communicating. When there's lack of communication, when there's more, Kind of, I say when things are in the cloud and you're not talking about them, that's when things go wrong. So the weekly calls and communication were huge. Now, my two favorite things that we did pre-launch. First, we decided that we were going to go to Bridge. So me and our director of training, we booked our flights, 
and we went out to see the bridge facility. Now, if we're going to lead a movement of change in the industry, corporate cultures, and communities, we need the right partner. And we signed up with Bridge because we, we understood their corporate culture. We learned about them, but we wanted to see it. I wanted to meet the people face to face. I wanted to see kind of this op center to where the customer service was going to be, because we paid for the 24 seven customer service. But we wanted to see the culture. We had an amazing visit there where we got to sit at a round table with the C, I believe it was the sales team. Then we got to sit around and talk to some of the executives there and really just pick their brains. Because as you saw the picture at the first slide, like it's a partnership. We're here to help them grow and they're here to help us grow. So that kicked off that conversation. Next thing that happened is Bridge came to movement. So that provided us the opportunity to get the, the key stakeholders, the right people, face to face with the bridge team. Any questions that they had, they could ask to bridge right there. Any questions that we had, we could just continue this dialogue. And this is where we finalized our implementation plan. And there were so many Google Docs and conversations and things just to make sure that we were diligent in everything we could do before we ever rolled this out to anyone. The pre-launch, in my opinion, was the most important step in a successful rollout. Finally, we had the development site. So as soon as Bridge gave us the development site, that's where we started to roll in some of our pre-trainings. And it's really where we started to build. To this date, I can't tell you, I mean, maybe 10 courses that we've purchased externally for Bridge. We don't purchase external. If we want to lead and be the best, we're going to create internal. And if we want to lead in culture, we have our own language. I can't buy trainings that use our language. So we really started to create in this development site to where we had what we needed for the rollout. We had courses already loaded in. We were already building up that library and testing things out, especially with SCORM, the compliance trainings. Compliance takes time to build. So we were able to load in the stuff that we needed to and just make sure that it was working. Once we got through the pre, kind of the pre-launch, we then got into the test. We picked two departments, we got two departments at Movement that we wanted to test. We tested our whole entire Richmond operations uh, because that's about 60 people, so a small group. And then we have, uh, our op center runs in communities. So we had a smaller community of about 75 people in Charlotte, Indian land, uh, run that test case. And we just rolled out Bridge. And we gave them a little bit of instruction. They had to do it um, dually with the other LMS. And we already started getting really good feedback. We also saw some of the issues that we needed to make sure that we fixed before the massive rollout. Um, it was really smart to do that test. We did it two months before we did the big rollout. So this was October before January. Um, and it helped us tremendously. So the test before the rollout was key. Now we get into the fun part. We had our launch. Uh, we have an amazing company. I will constantly brag on our company because I love where I work. And we do things like Friday morning meetings to where in each operations center we get 700 people together and we just have a 10 minute meeting to where what's going on at the company. It's that meeting where we're able to broadcast that through Facebook Live, which then that gets to sales, and it's one way we get announcements out. So Bridge was a part of that. Another way that we get things out is through email, through our, we call them our hub blasts. So we were able to start announcing Bridge through those. We, we loved this during kind of the teaching of Bridge. We love how Bridge uses Bridge to teach you about Bridge. So we were like, well, that's, that's great. No other LMS company that we were looking into used their platform to teach us about that, their platform. That's shocking. Like, this is a learning management system. If we have a dev site, if we have a sandbox, use it to teach me about your product. I won't get on that soapbox. It's just common sense. It didn't really make sense to me. Uh, but we used Bridge, so we created a program. In this program, we had an intro video from our chief talent officer. Now, we're also a very unique mortgage company. We have one of the top marketing departments 
of any company in any industry. So it kind of helps that we can record in the studio some really high quality videos. Next thing we did is we had a compliance intro, we had a training intro, and a development intro. So we created a program with four courses. That's Bridge. We were able to use it to teach it, and then we're able to track it, who's gone in and taken these courses. Now, I have a video in here, yes, of our chief talent officer. I believe this thing, does this have volume? If I hit play, this is the thing we probably were supposed to test pre-presentations, pre but you know what, here we go. Hello, Movement Mortgage. As you know, we've experienced rapid growth over the last several years. From a team of five in 2008 to over 4,000 at the start of 2017. And we aren't done yet, not even close. But with that growth comes the need for change. Whether it's new buildings at our ops locations, the new community structure, or the launch of the Easy app, we are a company known for our ability to adapt quickly to the needs of our customers and our employees. With that spirit of excellence in mind, I proudly welcome you to the future of learning at Movement Mortgage. Welcome to Bridge. What is Bridge? I'm glad you asked. Remember Symphony? Well, it's gone. I know we're all gonna miss those Jeopardy boards, but Bridge is our new e-learning platform that will allow us to train, learn, and develop in ways that will meet the needs of our growth and allow us to maximize our greatest resource, one another. Following this video is a series of several short courses that will walk you through the Bridge system. As you navigate through the courses, be sure to pay close attention to each of the elements of this exciting new platform. To celebrate this new resource, we're giving away free stuff. That's right, free. Are you interested? Here's how to play. Complete the courses in this introductory program before the end of January, and you will automatically be entered into a drawing to win prizes like Movement Gear, an Amazon Echo, even an Apple Watch. But if you're Bronson, it's called an iWatch. So what are you waiting for? Finish this introductory program today and take the next step in your personal and professional growth right here at Movement Mortgage. a fun story about that video. Noah was standing on the side with a, a pretty big confetti cannon, and we only had one. So it was, we told Chris, like, listen, you got to get this right on the first take. We didn't know how loud it was going to be. We, we didn't know where the confetti was going to fall. It worked out very well, but got to have some fun with your implementation um, as you go through the process. But this video kicked off the courses when they went in, and then we got to track who took them, and we handed out free stuff. People love incentives, so make sure you have some sort of incentive in your rollout. And this is something that affected or was able to be rolled out to all 47 states, so we could ship gear anywhere. As long as you completed it, you were a part of this process. Other things that we did, uh, bridge support. So we have the 24-hour support. A part of our assessment was what capacity do we have as a company? What capacity does our IT department have as a company. And our IT department, so as we're growing, our IT department has so much that they're working on as well that they don't need tons of emails and phone calls that say, hey, I, I got locked out of bridge. Can you help me? So we made sure that we got the right support to help us make friends in our own organization. So we paid for that support. And then we printed these small little business cards with the bridge support contact information on it. Not only did we print them, but we had advocates at each of our operation centers that walked around and passed out these cards. We know the importance of not, behind, not hiding behind email or even videos. Like people don't always watch that stuff. So how could we make sure that we had a successful rollout? We had face-to-face -face time with each and every person in the operation center. Here's a bridge support card. Don't call our IT department. Call this card, this number, and then any information you need, I'm your bridge contact at this op center. Please let me know if there's anything you need. That means that we were still that subject matter expert inside the operations center for them to go to. This alleviated any big fires from getting too big during the implementation. Any questions went right to us. Even our executive team, as they had questions, they went right to us. Thinking through kind of it's the constant communication as well. Like any question they have, they want answers and they want them quick. It's important that they know the right person to go to. 
So if they see that, true story, if they see that the compliance department is attached to this bridge platform, we had someone walk into the compliance department and try to get questions from them about the platform of bridge. And very quickly, they were rerouted right to us. And we were able to answer it and make sure that we took care of that question. So when it comes to support and questions, just make sure they know who to contact. And go to all ends of the earth to make sure that they know. And some people are great at emails. Others are great at face-to-face. -face. Others are great at the bridge platform. So use it. And then, let's see, don't do too much too fast. That's another thing. We had four trainings uh, in one program that we rolled this out to everyone with. We didn't try to load in all these trainings in their library for them to go click in and take. We're still very protective of what's in the open library for them just to sign up with. But we really wanted to make sure that we, we started slow. And that was a big win. Again, we're coming from a not great LMS to a great LMS, right? Roll it out slowly, don't try too much. Hold your breath. So I remember when it was the day to roll out Bridge. We got together with the team that was responsible for this big initiative. Remember, like, remember Brett or remember Brett? Right? We got together and we just remember when the email was sent out, it was, here we go. But we had this really comforting feeling in all the pre-work that was done and the, the support that we had from Bridge that it went extremely smooth. Uh, a huge blessing, extremely smooth. Um, and then celebrate with key players. So that day, we all went out to lunch. And that's gonna be one of those lunches that I remember for a long time in my career. Because we took the time to stop and celebrate. And it's just a special time. So that was really kind of our launch. Now, a part of a successful implementation is not saying, okay, we rolled it out, we're good. Let's just let it do it, it's just gonna do its thing. Right? Instead, it's now what can we continue to do? Now we are using our culture, our language, to continue to just make sure that Bridge is a success. So we have a customer service training that we rolled out. Um, we use five big words. Uh, so imagine you're getting a cup of coffee. We'll teach you real quick. First thing you need is you need that barista to be aware. They need to know the knowledge to do their job. Then you need them to be accessible. If you're not, they're not there, you're not getting coffee. They need to be attentive. If you have a special order, they need to make sure that they're understanding your special order. After they hear your order, you need them to be active and make your coffee. And then finally, you need them to be adaptable so that they can figure out, hey, how can I do this better the next time? So with that language with Bridge, it's we need to make sure that we're aware and that we have the knowledge. Bridge continues to change. Your product team, that, I mean, already, we're already learning about things that are gonna continue to roll out and adjust. And we are huge fans of Bridge because we feel like we're growing together. Like you're new, we've only been around since 2008. Like we're still figuring out this whole mortgage thing, this training development thing. So grow together, constantly increase your knowledge. And with that, I say book smarts and street smarts. So you can't just say, well, the platform's running fine. We know how to use Bridge. Listen to the people. What are the people saying? What frustrations do our frontline processors have with the platform that we could improve upon? So book smarts, street smarts. Next is accessible. We need to be there quickly with ease. So that's the definition of accessible, to be found quickly with ease. And this is where we continue to partner with Bridge. We can be found, our training department, development, compliance, but we handed out those support cards. So we need to make sure that Bridge continues to be accessible. And the reports that we just got are extremely positive. So we're in that together. Attentive, definition of attentive is paying attention to the comfort and wishes of others. Really listening to I, I hear what you're saying, I see what the report says, but what are the underlying issues? As we continue to grow, we could just say, we're gonna build as many courses as possible, and we're just gonna roll out as many courses, but are we doing it smart? Are we able to make sure that we're seeing the underlying issues there? Next one is active. We wanna make sure that we're given that quick fix. Uh, so the word servant, it's a word that we all love. We all know what the word servant means, if I asked you to define it. But the word servant comes from the word deacon, which comes from the word diakonos in Greek. 
which means, which means to kick up dust. Right? Think of the Roadrunner, like the cartoon. When he sees a problem, he kicks up dust and takes off. Back in the day, that's what servants were known for. Are they kicking up the dirt to fill things so fast to where people are just in awe of just their role? So are we being active in just fixing things before e people even knew it was a problem? Next, adaptable, continuously improving. Right? That's why we're here. We had the decision, do we want to come to the bridge conference? Do we not want to come to the bridge conference? Do I want to go to 9,000 feet of elevation and struggle to speak? Or do I want to stay in Charlotte where it's comfortable? Right? Do I want to plan further trips just to partner with you know, all of you? Right? We all need to connect in this together and figure out how can we adapt? I can show you some things that we're doing well, and I can also show you some things that we have not done well. Right? But it's a community. But we need to adapt together to become better. A part of that is feedback. Constant communication, right? always have constant communication. I was talking to our COO or someone else and they said that our COO was frustrated because he didn't think Bridge could run a certain report. It's like, well, yeah, I can. Like, let's just sit down and talk with him. So constant communication to make sure that you're on the same page. We still have weekly meetings with Bridge, weekly or biweekly, uh, to where we're still talking through the implementation. We're not even at a year yet. We still have things that we're still implementing and figuring out. Uh, find the wins one at a time. You're supposed to win influence with an implementation. Uh, you can earn influence over time, or you can just you know, find those things that you just shoot yourself in the foot with. But slowly, and just continue to win influence slowly. And then finally, I've got a story for you to where identify champions. And this is something that I did on accident, but I'm going to tell you that it's one of the biggest things that helped the success of Bridge. So as we rolled Bridge out, we were really careful with who could author courses. I mean, it, it's a great tool, but you also want to be careful of who can push what information out. So we found this guy, his name is Josh Roberts. He was in our QC department. And QC was a department that was just going through a lot of struggles. And they needed more training. And he is a very qualified individual when it comes to using a computer. So I said, Josh, do, do you want to author some courses? He's like, yeah, that'd be awesome. So I gave him a 30-minute run-through because that's all you need with Bridge. That's why we went with Bridge. 30-minute run-through of this is how you author courses. He authored two courses, and he trained the entire QC department in three different op centers with these two courses. Now, Word very quickly got back to our COO about how did we get them trained in such an efficient manner to where they are now doing a better job at their tasks to help us succeed as a company. Very easily step in and say, it's because of Bridge. Josh was then able to create whatever courses he wanted to. Now, we have checks and balances. You know, he has to get them run through compliance, but he was my champion. That was the biggest thing that helped me win over that initial kind of mindset of our COO of this is a good platform. And as long as that stays in his mind, we'll be able to continue to get more money towards Bridge. I'm excited to hear from Matt later, and we've had some conversations on other things they're building, and our company's kind of at this kind of this rest period. Uh, we're, not, we're not bringing on anything new and major right now, but I'm just really excited because the successful rollout of Bridge and how we're utilizing it as a company has put us in a spot to do bigger and better things because we have that influence. So that's our story. That's how Movement and Bridge went from you know, a casual uh, training about a year and a half ago coming in our building to us really deciding that that's who we wanted to go with. And we're just gonna continue to utilize Bridge and do bigger and better things. But you know, just from being here, I'm just so thankful that we have a learning management system that does not give me headaches and allows me to reach 42 to 4,500 people across 47 states. 1033, not too bad. I didn't go as long as I wanted to. It's my breath. Uh, but I will open it up for questions. I don't know if you have any. I'll do my best to answer them. If I don't know the answer, I'll make it up.
did you implement that culture change? We, as far as like just culture in general or like with Bridge? With Bridge, sort of making learning more strategic. So what really helped is, and we're still, let me tell you, we are still in a very big uphill battle. Um, the size of our staff for the size of company that we are that really manages Bridge is we have three, three people, two, two people that manage this system for our company. So it is an uphill battle, but it's a part of our mission. So what we did is we said, hey, this is who you guys said we were. And this is the street smarts from the company that the people are saying they need more development. Um, that's, it's kind of connecting those two things of let's be who we say we are. And it was also, this is what happens if we don't do this. Um, and that's where we really got to lean on the compliance piece. If we don't have something better, if we don't change, we're just going to get fined continuously. And if you want to keep your money as a private CEO, let us help. Um, so that, that helped. We wanted, we wanted 75 percent of our employees in the first month to have logged in to Bridge and to engage in the platform. Um, that was our kind of that was our first number that we wanted to hit, um, and we hit it. Now, one of the things we thought we thought that there was going to be more mobile logins uh, because sales like well you never stop anyways like you're not going to log in on your computer so we have a platform that's great on your cell phone. Uh, we saw that still a lot preferred their computer. Um, but 75% was our first number. Again, like compliance is mandatory. And that is something that we cannot mess with as a company. So having a mandatory monthly training that everyone has to take really helps with the engagement. Uh, but what we've seen is people have gone to it more for other things outside of mandatory, um, which helps as well. Um, another thing that we've really loved about kind of rolling it out too is uh, whenever we do have a new platform, so we just rolled out a new expense um, management system that we have, uh, Bridge is what we utilize for that. So if you don't go to a session or you forget how to log in or log a new platform, uh, we've got Bridge to utilize that. So that really continues to help people go back to it. Um, yes? Yes, it was. Um, again, we are, I'm not going to say that they're a very hands-off executive team, but they're a very empowering, trusting executive team. So that was information that we gave to our chief talent officer that he then took to the executive team um, that helped them see that this was better because, again, our symphony platform, Shoot, I wasn't supposed to say who we went with before. Our other learning management system, uh, they did not do a good job of reporting. So the fact that we could already show numbers was a big, a big hit. We have not run into any limitations, and our compliance courses again go out to every single employee. So that course has to be taken by every single person, and we have not run into any complications. Yes? Uh, I really like the idea of bringing the core pros, so it seems to be a popular model at your company. Who were you guys uh, bringing in your in-house staff to make sure? So they were our, they're just business cards that we put the, our, some, I have one. Well, I'll just, you know. I'll have it up here. You can look at it in a little bit. But what we did with it is we put kind of our bridge and movement logo on it, and we put the email and phone number, and we printed enough out. Now, this is only something that we could do for op centers. But we do have continuous sales trainings where we bring salespeople in for new hire orientations. They get these cards there as well. So we printed these. We sent enough for each person in each op center, 
and then we just walked around and passed them out. And we didn't get a lot of major questions, but the biggest thing that we were able to relay is don't contact IT, contact this number, don't lose this card. Um, and just in case you haven't heard, we're changing from this platform to this platform. Um, that was the basics that we were able to roll out. We did get a lot of stupid, sarcastic questions as we walked around that had nothing to do with the learning management system. Um, but you know, a big part of our training development is just to create a relationship with the people of Movement Mortgage, and that continued that. We never want to be a face hiding behind something. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, sales is sales, <laughs> and you do everything you possibly can to say that we have, we have done our due diligence, and we have handed you the card, we've gone through the information. We haven't seen a lot of um, lack of knowledge on Bridge, so we don't get contacted a lot by the sales force. It's such a simple platform. Uh, one of the biggest things is people, I mean, a struggle of a large company, uh, large, we're 40, whatever, 100 people, it changed. I, I don't know the exact number because we grow so fast, like we just probably grew by 100 people while we're out here. But over 4,000, we just really needed to make sure that we're able to give them what they need to be able to log in. But they have so many logins for so many different platforms that they type in the wrong login for the platform, and that's usually our number one question. Well, I keep typing in my email. How come I can't log in? Well, this one's your employee ID number. Um, we also have a very bad HR IS system right now, to which we're switching over here in October, and that's gonna alleviate a majority of those questions. Any other, yes? We have, and that's where we've already been talking with Bridge on what they're creating, and there's a lot of that that I really love and I like to geek out about. Um, I think that as we grow, and we just talked about several different platforms, it makes a lot more sense to kind of have this add-on to a platform compared to, hey, let's pick up another platform. But where we are as an organization, we're not quite there yet to where they see the value. Um, we are a very financial driven organization and I deal with a lot of financial people. So it's teaching them the importance of even a LMS in general and why we need this. But yes, um, I would just because the tracking is so easy. We are currently thinking through just like what's the best way to do that. And you know, start simple. We're not, we've only done this since January. So we're still just trying to get the simple steps done. And in a year, if they have not heard anything about compliance training failures, then we can go back and say, you know, step one was compliance. That was your biggest thing. Once we start getting into, and they just came up with a big two-year plan, and people development is a part of that, now we can really start to dive into the numbers of um, retention, how much we're saving. Um, and we just need more champions, honestly, to help us push that message. But step one was just compliance. Step two is training. Um, we grew by so many last year, we've kind of backed off a little bit this year. Um, we're not seeing as many, I would say, difficulties in bad loans so we are saving money because people are better at their jobs. 
Um, that's the ROI so far. Any other questions? 1044. Awesome. Well, I just, again, want to thank you for your time. Thank you for being here this morning. Um, I look forward to hanging out with all of you during this thing, this conference. That's the word. Um, that's the oxygen. Uh, but thank you again. Have a great day.